Hi everyone and welcome to this roundtable discussion on the theme of loneliness. My name is Jamila and I am chair of the Muslim Mental Health Alliance. We're a network of uh, Muslim mental health organisations that came together at the start of the pandemic to provide uh, support on mental health. I'm also a final year PhD student looking at Muslim men and mental health. I'll now hand over to Sahar Beg to introduce herself. Thank you, Jamila. My name is Sahar and I'm CEO and founder of MindWorks UK, Psychological Services. I'm a counsellor, supervisor and trainer. And I came together with the Muslim Mental Health Alliance um, at the time of COVID and we presented lots of webinars, mashallah. I'm looking forward to our roundtable discussion on uh, loneliness. Um, and I think it's going to be quite interesting to have these discussions. Hi everyone, I'm Myra. I'm the founder of MCAPN, which is the Muslim Counselor and Psychotherapist Network. And I also work as a counselor, supervisor and counseling tutor. And I'll hand back to Jamila. Great, thank you. I'm very excited for this discussion. So I think um, it's important to define what loneliness is before we kind of start talking about it. So what are your guys' opinions? What do you think loneliness is? Is there a standard definition? I'm just going to come in, Jamila. Um, is there a standard definition that we have a definition, you know, when you're on your own, mm -hmm. um, you know, being sad, um, no family or friends, which can lead into so many other things as well, you know, mm -hmm. can lead into depression, can lead into anxieties and other mental health um, um, illnesses from loneliness. Yeah. All right, what do you think? completely agree and what I'm what I'm really noticing is what I suppose I'm reminding myself of is when I've whenever I felt lonely what is it that's been going on for me and the word that keeps coming up for me is a feeling of being disconnected mm -hmm. and so for me loneliness is a very internal process of feeling disconnected from either myself or from others and you know, there, there is absolutely that cliche about you can be in a room filled with other people, but still feel lonely. And so, again, I think what can often happen is, is that people mistake it for being physically present with other people. Whereas I'm actually thinking about loneliness for me is always about feeling an emotional disconnection from others or, or from yourself. Yeah, I agree. I think this emotional response is really key because that lack of connection to the self, to our, you know, how we own it um, and to others as well, because, you know, that pain that we have within us, it just um, has a huge impact. I know personally for me, you know, I could be alone with all these thoughts and have no one to share them with mm. and, and, and reaching out. You know, you think, well, how do I connect to others if I'm disconnected with myself? So that's a really yeah. key point, Myra. I, I liked what you mentioned there, Sahar, about um, being alone with thoughts as well, because I found that when I'm feeling lonely, it can worsen my anxiety because that's when thoughts, um, intrusive thoughts start to come in and, and things like that. And, and even as, as you said, Myra, if I'm around people physically, I might not be kind of around them mentally and it can still have a negative effect um on myself yeah i i absolutely I, I was i was thinking about that feeling of not only the consequences kind of what what's the ripple effect then of being disconnected mm -hmm. But also what causes that disconnection in the first yeah. place so for me there's something about us thinking together today around well what causes the disconnection to happen yeah. and then what's the impact of the disconnection mm -hmm. and, and I think Jamila you make a really important point around one very common thing or key impact of feeling disconnected is absolutely then the impact on our mental health that can yeah. lead to um, increased levels of anxiety, rumination, depression um feet further exacerbating feeling that you're on your own and it can yeah. turn to this vicious cycle then of loneliness therefore I'm on my own and then we start to look for evidence of it so loneliness almost is kind of this middle piece in the jigsaw that both there are things that can cause it and then 
things happen as a consequence of it as well, like the knock on effect of feeling lonely. So there's actually quite a lot, I think, going on, mm. you know, a, a, under kind of the one word when we say loneliness, actually, yeah. there's a huge process that's actually going on underneath it. And I think um, it absolutely, um, I'm thinking about the weight of it then upon how we feel about ourselves and how yeah. we feel about ourselves in relationship with other people and how also mm. we might think about the quality of our relationships as well so um mm. the impact yeah. and the influence is huge yeah I agree actually and that has that knock-on effect then doesn't it, on our self-esteem our confidence and also um, um around how we sit with ourselves you know because we can be alone and then are lonely so being alone is I think slightly different to being lonely yeah. Um, yeah. sometimes it's okay to be alone yeah you know, sticking with our thoughts and mulling things through but yeah. to not have to share that with somebody or you know relationships as we were just talking about and the physical side of isolation and things like that you know I think it's really key that you know we do have this is a great place to actually start talking about in this round table talk about you know how do we combat this loneliness almost you know how do we reach out to ourselves and to others you know um so that's something to think about as well I think today yeah and, and I think letting people know that it's okay to say you are lonely because so I think it, it it's quite stigmatized it's quite um maybe especially if you do have a lot of people around you how can you be lonely in a household of you know five other people people might say mm -hmm. but I think especially um, during the pandemic, for example, I, I was living at home with four other people um, in lockdown and I still felt very lonely. Mm. Um, despite, you know, the house being extremely busy and I'm sure a lot of people went through that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's, um, I know for myself when it was pandemic and I'm so used to working on my own, yeah in my office at home and then I had everybody else working from home and it's almost like oh my god you know I have other people here but that 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 feeling oh my gosh you know I'm still kind of alone here and it's like it was quite but you know I didn't realize I had kind of anxiety even that you know when you're thinking okay why am I breathing this way what's going on I mean put your hand in the center boom 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 yeah. you can actually it can cause a lot of um health issues as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And I think it's okay to, I think it's okay to reach out and ask for the help. Um, and I know many, many people see it as a weakness, you know, yeah. oh, well, you know, I can't say I'm lonely, but it's actually okay. And we, we find a way to start doing that. I think we're in the crux of it all. I think we, we're in, in a situation and we have to kind of look at thinking, where is this affecting my mental health? You know, I know we've talked about that earlier. Um, because you don't want it to affect your mental health. You want to be okay and you want to be able to get out and, and do things in confidence and, and build up your motivation. And I, and I know that, um, that we're going to talk a little bit more about how to, to combat loneliness. So, yeah. Mari, what's your thoughts? Really interesting because I think so, so many thoughts in my head actually. I mean, what I think there's something around the stigma of loneliness because. I suppose I, I, as you were both speaking about the stigma of it and, and the difficulties of saying perhaps out loud to somebody else that you feel lonely, that you're experiencing loneliness. I mean, absolutely, there is stigma around it because how is it perceived? And I'm thinking about loneliness itself then being perceived, as you said, Tara, as a weakness. I was thinking of it as loneliness being perceived as a failure. We are failing in relationships or we're failing in being a sociable person or a friendly person that somehow when we feel lonely it's a reflection of how nice of a person we are yeah and so um I think there's something about this this stigma around loneliness I think is huge actually and I think it does stop people from saying that they're from that they're feeling lonely or they're experiencing loneliness and alongside that I'm also thinking then about um again this kind of confusion between quality and quantity Mm. that um, the fantasy or the projections that people might put on us or we might put on other people that oh well such and such a person has lots of friends therefore they can't be lonely and what we're mistaking is the um, the quantity with quality so mm -hmm. yeah and I think that then feeds back into the stigma 
Mm-hmm. Um, because then what you, what that person might, you know, that person then said, I feel lonely. What they're then kind of faced with then is this projection of, well, how can you be lonely when, I don't know, you seem to always be with friends or you're always posting on social media that yeah. you've got a really busy social <laughs> life. And so I think what gets confused, what, what gets seen as um, somebody who might have a very good social life or a busy social life or is around people a lot, mm-hmm. that's, that then gets confused for then, well, they can't then be lonely or they can't possibly experience loneliness. Mm-hmm. Um, so this quality and quantity, I think, gets gets mixed up. Mm-hmm. One mistake one for the other. That's an interesting point, actually, Mara, you, you um, pointed around when somebody is very busy in doing their social media because we know that everything's been online. Mm-hmm. And having to, I know, you know, for myself, having to roll out like little Instagram posts and things and, you know, not very techy minded but you, it, it can be quite difficult you know to think well actually you know well I'm on my own doing this yeah and it might feel there's a a, a huge team mm-hmm. and it might be like four or five people or or you may be the only person doing everything and how lonely that really is without you know and like you said Mara people might think you you know got real huge social life mm-hmm. another thing I just picked on um just wanted to say was around the weakness um, so I don't know, Miller, I know that you're doing your PhD in, on, on men and, I, and I'm wondering, and I'm not going to say anything myself, I'd like you to say it, um, around men and loneliness. I think that's really, really important. Um, so yeah, thank you, Saha. Um, I, my PhD is focusing on Muslim men and mental health. And I think um, throughout my interviews, a lot of the loneliness that's been spoken about has been as a consequence of them bottling up emotions or being the strong one in the family feeling like they have to be kind of that pillar of strength not being able to talk about um their feelings or anything going on with them um because i guess there's that kind of attitude that if if they kind of crumble or show any kind of weakness then their family will too and it will kind of affect everyone in their circle Um, and i think that has made a lot of men then feel quite alone because they feel like they're the only ones going through that. They have no one to talk to. Um, You know, I think I've read some things whereas women are more likely to talk to their friends about what they're going through, about um, their mental health and things like that. And I think it's a combination of stigma, of talking less, um, all these things. I think there is a real problem with loneliness amongst men. Is that something you guys see in your practices as well? I've, I've definitely noticed that the space or the experience in a counselling space is often felt different perhaps for some male clients than for female clients. And I hear it, I suppose I hear it more often from male clients and female clients, which is, Um, often male clients say things like oh this is the only space I can talk about this stuff or you're the only person that I've told this to so I think there's something about and again it's not a absolute split that all men are like this and and no women are but I just hear it more often from male clients which is about the space in counselling becomes their one or only space in their life where they feel able to be completely open and vulnerable vulnerable about how they're feeling I think more often with female clients with women what we're what I'm seeing anyway is yes absolutely counseling will still be a safe space and yes they might still bring things that they may not have spoken um, about in the rest of their life but more often with 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 women and female clients um they may have shared it with at least one other person or with a family member, but definitely yeah. with male clients, it, I much more often hear them say to me, Mario, the only one I've spoken to about this, or I've not revealed this to anyone else, especially when it comes to um, feelings, relationships, mm-hmm. any particular topic that they feel is highly stigmatized or mm-hmm. it will hugely affect their relationships, especially with their family. If like, almost a bit like if it was a taboo subject or a secret. Um, yeah. So they, I think they relate to counselling slightly differently. I think that's, w- with what you said about that being, or you being the only person they've ever spoken to about these things, that's something that came a lot up, came up a lot for me in my interviews as well. Um, most, if not all, of the people that I interviewed when they were speaking about 
um, their challenges with mental health, they said to me, you know, you're the only person I've ever spoken to about this, um, which has been really interesting because that wasn't a counseling situation. That was purely a research situation. Um, and yet it was almost some form of therapeutic outlet for them as well. Yeah. Quite interesting. And that's, that's really lovely to hear, actually. I know it wasn't um, a therapy session or anything, but it, it was given that space to acknowledge yeah. that you exist and that we want to hear from you. Yeah. And that's a step forward to breaking down stigmas, I think, as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, are there certain situations where women might feel kind of situations that are unique to women where they might feel especially lonely, um, maybe like postpartum? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, sorry, Maya, was you about to say something? No, please jump in. Okay. I think most certainly because I think it's having a, a, a baby and, and, and all the hormones is, are, are rife and all over the place. And then you have, and if you're a first time mum, certainly, or, or second or third, yeah. the hormones arrive and you have these overwhelming feelings of that you are just on your own mm. and having a baby, you know, and everyone could be around you. But again, those racing thoughts um, in your head and all, you know, no one to share them with, not knowing what is going on in my body um, and having these kind of, not a psychotic moment or anything, but these out of body mm. experiences almost and doing things differently and, and behaving differently. Mm. Um, and people don't na- 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 oh, sorry, excuse me, naturally understand oh, what is going on for a woman, especially for men who are very close to their wives or partners. Mm-hmm. They think, oh, what's going on? This is not normal, you know. And, and natural fact, is, you know, when the hormones are racing and rifing, you know, it has an imbalance in the whole, you know, our neurological system, our, our physiological system after having the baby. Yeah. And I think it's about recognizing and reaching out, you know, again, reaching out um, and understanding oh something's not right for me here I need to get the help and many women don't know how to reach out for help and it's almost like you know um psychiatric nurse has to be involved or the doctor would say what something's going on it's not right we need to get you seen by the health visitor the health mental health team and then that stigma on that on top of it you know for many women yeah um, the fear of well I'm having this episode of something now my, my, my child or my children are going to be taken away from me. And again, yeah. they're feeling that isolation, that lonely feeling. Yeah. That, you know, I don't understand myself. So earlier on, Myra mentioned around, Reiki, around connection and disconnection. How do we know there's something wrong in the body? Mm-hmm. You know, if we're not, if we're so disconnected, then that can happen yeah. with um, postpartum depression and, um, and anxiety. But we, have, we are so disconnected. And how do we re- reconnect with ourselves? It's a huge topic area, actually. Yeah. Mm. I had a lot of friends who um, gave birth during lockdown, and I've noticed, off, um, especially coupled with the lockdown and that they've just given birth, a real decline in their kind of well being, mm. even if they had supportive partners, even if they, you know, had other children or people around them helping out. I think they really felt they were missing out on key moments with their babies maybe taking them out meeting being able to meet other family members and things like that so I think that still had a, a massive effect um on women I think it was a huge one my 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 actual daughter gave birth to twins actually in in lockdown and I had to become a bubble for her yeah. and that which meant all my other children weren't allowed to come to see me yeah. and it had in and we don't realize the knock-on effect yeah. You know, when you're a new mother um, or with other children, you know, you have that, you know, everybody's coming over, you're greeting, yeah. you're showing the baby, um, you know, you're able to go out to, to meet other, other friends and family, and that all stops, it's taken away. You know, it's almost like you're stripped of everything. Yeah. And that still to this day, some, some um, families still experience that kind of that lonely feel, feeling and um, a real disconnect. Mm-hmm. And how to reconnect, you know, then the we have newborn babies who have now become two years old and you know yeah. how they've not been able to connect on an early age early yeah. on with yeah. other family members 
And also, I guess the the women um, or the mothers aren't, you know, out in like baby groups, making friends with other women going through the same thing. Um, and I know there's there's that age old saying about as you get older, it's more and more difficult to make friends. Um, and that, I guess, also feeds into into loneliness as well. Yeah. Do you guys agree with that, that it, as you get older, it's more difficult to make friends? Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think the word mm-hmm. that came to my mind actually, just as you were saying that, Jamila, was the word transitions. Mm-hmm. And and I suppose I was thinking about we go through life transitions. We go through um, as we get older. So there's kind of transitioning purely based on age. Mm-hmm. But also I'm thinking about just where we are kind of situationally in life. Um, are we studying? Are we at school, college, uni? Are we working? Um, are we established in a career? Have we just changed job? Are we are we about to retire? Um, have we perhaps never worked and been perhaps stay a stay at home mum or dad? Um, and I and I'm just thinking about transitions in the sense of what can often feel like things have changed actually because you've actually achieved something. Maybe you've graduated. Maybe. Um, you've just been promoted, maybe you've just got a new job. So again, there's something about on the surface, it feels like there's an achievement or an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. But because the nature of that involves change, it also generates loss, it generates a a loss of friendships or connections, it generates um, an increased experience, perhaps of feeling alone, Mm -hmm. or on your own. I'm sure many of us have experienced that when we're perhaps we've had a new job and we go into a new um, organization or team or department and we're now like oh I feel really on my own and lonely because I haven't got people around me that I've built connections with yet mm-hmm. or equally in, in terms of personal transitions um, if you've perhaps just got married but again on the outside it looks like oh you've, you've met somebody you've got married you've now got a partner you've now got perhaps in-laws and or an in-law family but actually under the surface, you might feel incredibly lonely because you're going into a family who already have pre-existing connections and relationships and you're the newbie. Yeah. So I'm really mindful that there's something about what can feel like really positive things going on in people's lives. Under the surface, though, we miss actually how lonely that might be for people. And mm. again, we might project and we might get caught up in the happiness of that positive thing happening to them and yet I'm really mindful the number of times where I've ended up working with clients who Mm. say then that they do feel really lonely because Mm. they've just started in a you know a new job and they don't know anyone they feel really out of sorts or um, daughter-in-laws who maybe traditionally go and live with their in-laws then all of a sudden find themselves in a family where they feel really isolated and on their Mm. own Mm. so again maybe in a really big extended family household um, but then feel like that they are on the outside and they might have moved from their hometown. They might have moved moved miles away from mm-hmm. their own family and friends. So I think we've also got to recognise that loneliness also is something that I think can also be easily missed, mm. easily hidden, yeah. easily um, just, e- just invisible, hidden, just easily not noticed in people. Mm. Because what what looks like on the outside is something really positive and happy and um in that sense of it being an achievement mm. but underneath it all that person can be feeling incredibly lonely yeah yeah and also Myra and it's really important um on the other side of that in regards to relationships when you come to an end of relationship whether it's through a divorce or through bereavement how that's very isolating mm. Yeah. I think you know, everything you said is very pertinent um, and also on the opposite you know when I uh, you know got parents when we're going through divorces and things and that sense of loss and you lose a, a whole structure that you know you've t- taken time to get mm. be a part of that cousin family yeah. and um, in the relationship again in that household of you know you're a newbie yeah. in there and now you're out of it yeah. out of the, the family mm. unit and now you know and everybody's left you almost yeah yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think it is about a starting to really understand that we can sit with a multitude of feelings simultaneously mm-hmm. and we can sit with both 
feelings that can feel really good, positive, empowering, happy, successful, whilst at the same time also acknowledging the loneliness as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about uni students, you know, the transition of people, the kids, 18-year-olds um, moving out of home for the first time and going off to uni, you know, for a very good positive reason, you know, massive achievement that they're going off to uni, mm -hmm. but we can simultaneously sit with the feelings of them feeling lonely to go off to uni at the same time and I think that's another transition to you know period in time where again on the outside the cliche is is that uni is the best years of your life and yet we know firsthand from I know, definitely know working working firsthand in a university student counselling service yeah. and even now in private practice working with a lot of students over the years how lonely and isolated they are so again yeah. I think it's about the starting to really be really mindful but also be realistic that just because something looks shiny and glossy on the outside such as being at uni a new job getting married having a baby um retiring whatever it might be that on the outside looks really good just below the surface we've also got to acknowledge just how difficult and challenging that experience is as well and then loneliness i think is a big part of that um Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also, I think you're linking right back also to Jamila, what you were saying earlier about it gets harder to perhaps make connections and make friends as we get older. I mean, I completely agree with you on that point, because it's about opportunity to connect. If we think about loneliness being the experience of feeling disconnected and then perhaps um, the lo logical solution to that is to, OK, to connect with people actually where are the opportunities then to connect with people you know if yeah. we're thinking about how can we support ourselves or other people through loneliness what do I need to do on a very simple minimalized answer it would be reconnect yeah. but I'm also really mindful of actually how difficult that can be as well yeah. especially off the back of a two-year pandemic you know with two years um we're, we're, you know two years to, um, coming towards you know in terms of pandemic and and, and bearing in mind, the pandemic hasn't finished either. But two years of people not having yeah. opportunity to connect or reconnect. Mm -hmm. And actually, there has been a um, that opportunity to connect. That's the thing that's been taken away from everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a double whammy for people at the moment. Mm -hmm. Not only as people get older, I think opportunities to connect with people diminishes. Mm -hmm. But then throw into the mix as well, pandemic and lockdown. Yeah. And I think as we come out of this pandemic, I'm really hoping, and, I'm, and also I'm really hoping that one of the outcomes from us doing this discussion today is that we're, more of us are able to acknowledge and say, as we start to reconnect with people, as we start to come out of the pandemic, is to actually start to talk about and think about, actually, it's been a very lonely time for people. Mm -hmm. That actually yeah. people, that, that there's, it's, we, as, as a country, actually globally, I think it's been rife people's experience of loneliness during the pandemic. Yeah, I, I just wanted to come in and mention, um, I guess the impact of loneliness on younger people as well, because I volunteer with a, a lot of young people and we can see a massive change in their social skills or lack thereof mm -hmm. because of the pandemic, because they've just been at home, they haven't been interacting you know, with adults that aren't their parents, for example, or with their friends in a way that's not just on social media. Mm -hmm. So they are less kind of, I guess, used to being around people physically. They maybe will struggle to have a conversation that's not over text message because that's what they've been used to. That's, and I think a lot of these younger people have felt lonely during the pandemic. And we are seeing kind of the the after effects as well. Yeah, so something about if, if we lack, again, if we're lacking an opportunity to socialise, if we're lacking an opportunity to feel what it is to be connected with people, yeah. it's almost a bit like a muscle that we've not used. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's become kind of dormant. Yes. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, for two years, it's been a, it's been a, our kind of connection muscle our ability to relate our ability to connect with people I think the opportunity to do that has been really lacking and and again what it brings to my mind is again when we're thinking about that feeling of being connected to people it's about an emotional connection mm. not physical 
Yeah. Um, so it's not just about I'm physically in a, in a room with other people or, or virtually online in a Zoom meeting like we are today. It's I think it's something about opportunity to emotionally connect and actually mm. what that takes, not takes from us, but I think what does that ask of us to be able to emotionally connect with people? I'm thinking about are we comfortable with or are we used to being emotionally vulnerable with people mm. are we used to sharing our feelings with people I think again mm. because of the pandemic because the last couple of years mm. I think we have just not had as much opportunity to do that as well so mm. for us even to kind of sit in conversation and connect with others and go this is how I'm feeling yeah has yeah. become I think potentially more more difficult more challenging for yeah. us and yet that's the very thing that they, that then can lead to feeling lonely and isolated. And I think that's so hard to do online as well, to connect with someone in that deep level, because you can't necessarily see their body language. You can't yeah. kind of read these cues that you would if they were in person. Um, so I think that's something that a lot of people may have found challenging as well. Mm. I think so. And, and, and certainly when you're in a counselling session, because everything's been online via Zoom, Skype, etc., and you're seeing a client or the client's seeing you, and it, that face-to-face -face is the most amazing experience, and they they don't have a privy to that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're slowly all coming back to to face-to-face, -to -face, but it's really um, really hard to to connect with somebody just online, even because, as you said, you you can't see them, you can't see the body language. And also that question, actually, Mari, you just said, how are you feeling? Mm. Just to be asked that, I think, is really important. Mm. Not how you're doing, but how are you feeling? Because mm -hmm. you're connecting again you know, with those emotions, isn't it? And that's what we want to, to be able to connect to ourselves. Yeah. And it might just spark off when you ask somebody, well, how are you feeling? And actually, well, how am I feeling? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've seen a campaign that said... Um, ask someone twice or three times because when you say you know how are you the first time they'll say oh, I'm fine if you if you ask a couple of times they might you know and I'm not saying you know go and ask strangers because they're probably not going to tell you <laughs> but when it comes to you know your friends your family ask a few times to let them know that actually you're fine with them kind of talking to you on that deeper level and offloading a bit maybe absolutely and I found that especially with my own family events I now don't say well how are you doing well, yeah. how are you I say well how are you feeling yeah because we've been in this pandemic as Myra said earlier it's two years you know coming on to you and things and it's like well how am I feeling now after all this you know because yeah. it's about how do we then start self-regulating ourselves again how do we start self-connecting again such a almost relearning yeah to be with ourselves yeah and I think that's something we definitely need to do, learn to kind of sit with ourselves. And yeah. that's something I struggle with because, you know, I've had a lot of siblings growing up. I've always had people around me. I really struggle to sit with myself and not yeah. have something go, not have the TV on, or for example, not have music on. And it's quite scary thinking about just sitting with myself, with my own thoughts. I don't like mm. it so I'll go and do something or I'll fidget or you know but I think that it's, it's definitely a skill mm. well, what, what I was thinking about earlier in terms of just in, in what you just said Jamila about our experience of just sitting on our own and connecting with ourselves and it's, it's interesting because I was also thinking about what to one person is loneliness is another person's feeling quite content being on their own yeah. and I think we've also you know I really want to acknowledge that there is a difference between the two because mm. it's about what's the experience in that moment yeah um because for some people yeah just physically just being on their own is a trigger for loneliness because they feel lonely in the moment mm. for other people they can be physically alone and be perfectly okay mm. and 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 I suppose that the I think it's really important that we distinguish between the two because I'm sure there are many people watching this and going well during the pandemic actually I, it was actually really nice being on my own I enjoy being on my own and 
to be honest, I mean, I'm one of those people that, you know, I'm quite happy spending a lot of time on my own. I think yeah. that it's about what we're familiar with. Mm. Um, it's what we're used to. And Jamila, I know you just said about, you know, growing up in a bigger family, um, there's always people around. And I think that's, that's, that's about, for me, that's not a sign of whether someone's lonely or not. I think that for me is about what people are comfortable with or not. And that's different to lonely because, you can be somebody that's grown up with a lot of people, like to be around a lot of people, but still be lonely. Equally, you can be somebody that's around a lot of people, grown up with a lot of people, and and feel absolutely really good about that because you feel connected, like we were saying earlier, the opposite of that loneliness is feeling connected. But equally, we can put two people, one person is on their own and feel lonely, another person we put on their own and they're perfectly okay. Yeah, because I think what because I think what can happen is if somebody's on their own and they say actually I'm all right on my own sometimes the feedback is oh doesn't that get really lonely and I'm going again that's a projection that's about how the other person is going to be feeling because I think there's a stigma around mm -hmm. equally being mm -hmm. on your own it's like you can't win yeah. either way the yeah. stigma <laughs> around being lonely and on the flip side, I think there's stigma around spending time on your own because we live in this kind of extrovert dominant society that perceives being on your own as something wrong, again, as something lacking, as something that hasn't worked out. Mm -hmm. And yet I kind of want to stand up for introverts everywhere and go, actually, <laughs> we're quite happy being on our own if we're left to our own devices some of yeah. us are quite perfectly happy spending a day all by ourselves um and in it, fact we kind of prefer it at times um, and, and, and I kind of really want to acknowledge that because otherwise again it becomes about what gets stigmatized as something wrong yeah. and, and then it becomes something wrong about you yourself oh I'm yeah. flawed yeah. there must be something wrong with me that I like yeah. spending time on my own or yeah. some, my, there must be something wrong with me because I'm lonely so both are taken as failings yeah and I'm going they're not and I really yeah it's something for me about I really would love for more people for all of us to talk more about no matter what our personality is we can all at times feel lonely equally at the same time based on character and personality we are all going to have varying degrees on a spectrum of what for us feels comfortable in terms of spending time with other people and also spending time on our own kind of the the, the ratio between the two with people yeah. and on your own is going to be different for each of us and I think it's also about respecting that as well there is no shame yeah. in for those of us who actually like spending a lot of time on our own yeah it's, it's actually self-care it's actually about emotional regulation it's you know yeah. everything about yeah. looking after ourselves and the word that comes to mind for me when you talk about that, and it's really important, is contentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just being content being on your own, like I was thinking earlier about, you know, alone and loneliness. And then you summed it really lovely, Myra, um, alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, I think con being content mm -hmm. being on your own and also being content if you're lonely, but, you know, well, oh, yes, I know I'm lonely. And then obviously there's, we, you know, there's things that we can do to help ourselves if we want to. But are we content? You yeah. know, are we happy? Is it okay? Yeah. You know, it's not all doom and gloom, you know. Yeah. It, it, with with what you guys are saying, introverts and extroverts. So I would consider yeah. myself an extrovert. My housemate is an introvert. And when I first moved in, you know, I, I'd see her just being by herself and not going out of the house for three days. And I'm there going oh, do you want to come out with me should we go and do something go and, do and I think she just looked at me like no I'm quite all right here thank you and there's me going no I need to I need to go and talk to people I need to you know even if it's just to the shop and speak to the person serving me I, I, I need that interaction and I think it just took me thinking oh no she's fine like that and I'm fine like this and like you said being content well I think it goes back to that thing about quality versus quantity yeah, and, and I and I think when quantity gets confused with I'm um, sorry mm -hmm. when quantity quality gets confused with quantity, mm -hmm. then then it becomes about the amount the yeah. amount of time I'm around people or the amount of people I know or the amount of friends I've got, and again let's go back to personality and character and contentment and what's good self care and what makes us feel good about ourselves. 
Mm-hmm. The amount of time with people is going to be different for each of us. And equally, when we recognize, when we then do feel lonely, because introverts at times will also feel lonely, we're not immune to feeling lonely. Yes, at times we might feel really happy on our own, but I think for all of us across the board, it's at the point that we feel lonely, do we then go, okay, so what is it that's missing? Where have I disconnected or who have I disconnected from? And I think this kind of brings us into them thinking about, okay, so when someone feels lonely, what can they do to help themselves? Yeah. What have you, have either of you got thoughts on that? So when it comes to somebody feeling lonely, what what is it that, that how yeah how can they support themselves? What can they do to help themselves? I don't know what, what your you guys is uh, expert opinions will be on the method that I used, but um, moving to a new city with my PhD, I found that going out and volunteering really helped me to feel mm. less lonely. I think doing a PhD is a really lonely experience, especially yeah. if you like other human beings <laughs> um, it's just kind of you sitting with books um and so I decided to start volunteering a few times a week because I needed that outlet I needed to speak with people and I I don't know whether that was just kind of me not being able to accept the loneliness if that makes sense but I felt like I needed to do something um yeah. Jimmy, I also think that when we look at ourselves and how we um, recognize our personalities and our characters, yeah. so you know that actually for you, you need that interaction. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think also uh, when we do reach out, it's looking at what is it that I want to reach out to and who. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I did join a book club, for instance, early mm. in, which then fizzled out for me because then I realized, well, actually, I joined this online kind of book club. But actually, it's not, it wasn't for me. So it's a bit of trial and error, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think as long as we are open to trying yeah. new things and things that we may have left dormant for years, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, um, you know, I, I, I have two charities and, and I volunteer also on both doing various different things because I know that I like to keep busy mm-hmm. to not be lonely, but yeah. also... I know there might be other people who want to reach out to me in those charities because yeah. they're lonely. Really it's also where do I where do I then fit in also helping somebody else mm-hmm. being in the helping profession? So it's been quite mindful and open. Well, actually, I might not be lonely myself, but I know that person is, and let me just be there, yeah. and I could just stand there, or I I may just have a conversation or give somebody a call. Um, I know certainly more personal to me you know I know my mother-in-law is a socialite but so she likes to talk so making sure I have conversations with her because she was very lonely not being able to you know when you're of an age as well when you we talked about making friends at certain ages and you know when you're in your 70s 80s and early 90s it's hard to then go out and make friendships so I think it's also quite self-aware of yourself and aware of others yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I was just picking, I was just thinking as both of you were speaking, I was thinking about it's so to support somebody through loneliness. It's about, first of all, absolutely acknowledging that the feeling is there. Don't, don't mm-hmm. ignore it. Second of all, it's about, so where can I then identify opportunity then to connect with people? Mm-hmm. And that might absolutely be volunteering. Mm-hmm. That's definitely a really good way to, to um, at least give yourself the opportunity to, to meet people. And then thirdly, what I'm also thinking about based on Sahar, what you've just said is also also being really mindful of the quality of that connection as well, because I think it absolutely is about discerning. Okay, I've done the first two. I've acknowledged that I'm lonely. I've now started volunteering. I've now started joining a particular group or club or something. But then thirdly, but is that actually meeting my need to connect? Mm. Because it's the quality of that connection. Like you said, a book club then doesn't meet that need, but then volunteering in your charities does meet that need. Mm-hmm. So I think it's also about giving ourselves a little bit of self-compassion to go, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to give myself opportunity to meet people and to connect with people. But it's trial and error, as you said, about which people and which groups or which spaces 
are actually going to meet that need for connection within me um because as you said it might be a book club it might be a volunteering in a particular type of charity mm. it might be doing a particular sports with a team or a group mm. and it doesn't yes I'm meeting people but it's not actually feeling any good it's not to actually make me feel good so it's also about um regularly um mm. asking yourself like re reattuning to yourself asking yourself is this helping me to stop feeling lonely is this helping me to feel mm. less lonely um so don't so if you go out, so if you do go out and start trying stuff, don't beat yourself up either. Yeah. If it doesn't do it straight away for you, yeah. try other things. Because um, I'm also That's thinking cool. about um, whether it's volunteering or actually just joining a type of group or club. I think it's also really important to be honest with yourself about what your interests and hobbies are. There's no point going and joining a group just because you can and it fits in with your diary then going and joining a club that actually you have no interest in the in the top the common thing that brings yeah. you together um equally it's about being honest with yourself about well what actually does interest me let me go and find um courses or an evening class or a group or, or whatever type of club or hobby group actually based on the things that i'm genuinely interested in so i think there's something about being really self-aware and compassionate about what's actually going to help you as well yeah absolutely yeah and um, I think when I was looking for things to do I, I thought oh maybe I should join this running club and I thought no I'll, I'll be walking I hate running there is yeah. literally no point so mm. definitely um have a go at different things but know know what you're interested in and don't try to force it on mm. yourself but yeah We've had some really uh, interesting talks today. We've had um, some really inspiring tips. Um, so I really hope that you listeners have gained some um, tips about what to do if you are feeling lonely and gain more of an insight into loneliness. Uh, we will, of course, link all of the Maha, Maha Muslim Mental Health Alliance um, organizations down below. So if you do need support, then you can contact one of those. And we look forward to seeing you on the next roundtable talk.